Hello, very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television with me, Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. Karnataka agrees to release Kaveri River water to Tamil Nadu as per Supreme Court order. Chief Minister says that uh, the state will approach Apex Court with modification petition seeking changes to the order. MPs of all party delegation to Kashmir to meet to chalk out future course of action center likely to act tough against separatists for refusing talks with delegation. Prime Minister to leave for Laos uh, to attend the 14th ASEAN-India Summit says strategic partnership with ASEAN important for safeguarding and promoting security interests. Syrian government forces accused of dropping barrel bombs containing chlorine from helicopters on a suburb of Aleppo. 80 people reportedly injured. Emergency workers say people suffered breathing difficulties. And Caroline was the answer to the US, so fifth U.S. Open semi-final will take on German second seed Angelique Kerber. India's campaign ends with Sanya Mirza and doubles partner Barbara Strykova crashing out of the quarterfinals. Well, let's begin with our top focus on the bulletin this morning. Karnataka has decided to abide by the Supreme Court order and release Kaveri water to Tamil Nadu. The decision was arrived at uh, at an all-party meeting called by Chief Minister Siddharamaya. The move came on a day when a protest broke out in Karnataka and Tamil Nadu over the issue. While protesters in Karnataka are against the release of water, Tamil Nadu says that the water is inadequate. Despite severe hardship facing by Karnataka state, state will release water as directed by the orders of the Honorable Supreme Court. Karnataka Chief Minister informing about the decision arrived at after a nearly three hour long all party meeting convened by him over the Kaveri order by the Supreme Court. Karnataka has however decided to approach the Apex Court with a modification petition explaining the difficulties in implementing its order. It is seeking changes in the order of release of 15,000 cusacks of water per day to Tamil Nadu for the next 10 days. State will approach the Supreme Court and also Supervisory Committee for further directions. <laughs> The development coming on a day when normal life across South Karnataka was affected due to a bund against the discharge of Kaveri water to Tamil Nadu as per the Supreme Court's direction. Agitated farmers and pro-Kannada activists held protests in Mandya district, blocking all major roads and highways. Traffic between Bengaluru and Mysuru was severely affected as protesters held dharnas at more than 20 places on the highway connecting the two cities. Protesters also mobbed and ransacked public buildings and pelted stones at trucks flying on the roads. All colleges, schools and business establishments in the district remained shut. Tourist spots in the area were also closed due to law and order problems. कर्नाटक में रामनगर रामनगर जिले बेंगलोर मैसूर मंडिया हमारे को पीने को पानी नहीं है वैसे हमने सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने आर्डर किया है की हमारे को पानी कावेरी का पानी दो बोल के this despite an appeal by the state government to the people to not take law into their own hands. Supreme Court is the, the highest uh, uh, court in the country. We have to oblige, but at the same time, same time we have to convince the supervisor committee. The matter is going before the supervisor committee. We have to convince that. My appeal to the public is that don't resort to agitation or anything and keep calm mm -hmm. and we, we will make all efforts mm -hmm. to protect the interest of the farmers. Opposition parties also questioned the poor performance of the state's legal team for being unable to properly represent their case. We don't have water, 
for uh, even drinking purpose we don't have water mm -hmm. forget about irrigation purpose and request uh, uh, our chief minister to go appeal mm -hmm. the explain the exact position mm -hmm. to the supreme court protests also erupted in parts of tamil nadu Farmers from the Delta region took to the streets expressing unhappiness over the apex court order, claiming 15,000 cusicks of water was inadequate for their farming needs. Bus services from Tamil Nadu to Karnataka were also suspended. The Tamil Nadu government has sought for 50 TMC feet of water, but uh, the Supreme Court has uh, given us only uh, 15,000 cusicks uh, per second for 10 days, which comes around, say, 12.5 TMC feet, which is much, much below what we had expected. The only worrying aspect is that the Tamil Nadu government is not doing enough uh, to ensure that uh, there is uh, proper pressure on the central government and the appropriate authorities to ensure there is water release. Uh. On Monday, the Supreme Court directed Karnataka to release 15,000 cusacks of Kaveri water per day to Tamil Nadu for the next 10 days. The court said this was being done to ensure that the Samba crop in Tamil Nadu survives. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Moving on to other news now, the Kashmir All Party delegation will meet in the capital today to discuss future plans for German Kashmir. Unhappy at the stubborn refusal of Huriyat leaders to meet the delegation, the centre may announce tough actions against the separatist leaders, making their foreign travel difficult and scaling down their security. The centre will also scrutinise their bank accounts and complete pending investigations in cases against them. This after Home Minister Rajnath Singh briefed Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the situation in the valley on Tuesday. Rajnath Singh also discussed the issue with BJP President Amit Shah along with Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, Minister of State Jitendra Singh and BJP General Secretary Ram Madhav. Meanwhile, Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Mehbooba Mufti also hit out at the separatists for spoiling and insulting the spirit of Kashmir. Mufti criticised their action of shutting the door on members of the all-party delegation, thereby stalling the process for finding lasting peace. इस विषय में आगे जो भी कार्रवाई के संदर्भ में बोलना होगा कल एक बार फिर आल पार्टी मीटिंग के सामने चर्चा होने के बाद सरकार ऐलान करेगी Meanwhile, fresh violence has been reported in Kashmir. A man was killed on Tuesday in Anantnag district. He was identified as Nasir Ahmad Mir and was killed when security forces tried to chase away the protesters in Seer Hamdan area of uh, South Kashmir, even as many other people, including a woman, sustained injuries. The clashes disrupted normal life for the 60th day in a row in the valley. Meanwhile, Pakistan violated the ceasefire agreement once again, firing on Indian positions in the state. Curfew was lifted on Tuesday from Srinagar, but people stayed off the roads due to a shutdown call given by separatists. Movement remained restricted in the old Srinagar city and Pulwama district. The Kashmiri separatists who refused to meet a parliamentary delegation led by Home Minister Rajnath Singh over the weekend extended the shutdown call till Thursday. Rajnath Singh has been uh, desperately trying his best and I have all my uh, best wishes for him. That, uh, but unfortunately, things are not seem working. This all-party delegation should have gone there in the very first week of, say, 10th or 15th, within 10th and 15th of July itself. There can't be preconditions like, you know, if Huriyat says that, well, AFP, SPA should be first removed and then we will talk, act of high-handedness. We cannot tolerate that. We would consider withdrawal of that act, but first and foremost position was to bring peace in valley for which they should have come the unrest in kashmir has so far left 73 people dead 71 of them civilians thousands of stone pelting local residents are being led largely by young people complicating efforts to tackle them the valley has been under lockdown since 8th july when clashes erupted after security forces gunned down separatist militant burhan wani well look it may have been uh too much to expect an all-party delegation to come up with a solution in 24 hours. What is important is to meet and to show that we are interested in contact and dialogue. 
अगर सरकार में ही लोगों का विश्वास उठा हुआ है अगर आप ही ने कुछ ऐसी हरकतें की हैं जिसमें विश्वास नहीं बन पा रहा है तो बाकी पार्टियां कुछ भी कोशिश करते हैं पिछले आठ नौ महीने से जम्मू कश्मीर में एक तरीके से ज्वलन स्थिति बनती चली जा रही है बार बार सरकार से कहा जा रहा है लेकिन प्रधानमंत्री अपने पूर्वानुभासों से हट सही में कश्मीर की समस्या को अगर एक मानवीय और देश के नागरिक की समस्या समझें तब तो हल होगा ना मसला हमने हर वर्ग को बुलाया था जम्मू कश्मीर के और सबने बड़ी अच्छी तरह अपने पक्ष को रखने का काम किया था स्पेशली स्टूडेंट्स ने प्रोफेसर ने वकीलों ने आकर अपने पहलू रखे और मुझे लगता है कि उन सब पर सात तारीख को चर्चा होगी जिन लोगों को न्यौता दिया गया था और वो नहीं भी आए कहीं ना कहीं आज उनको अपना जो जमीन है उसको खोती देख वो इस तरह के कदम उठा रहे हैं On Tuesday, Pakistan violated the ceasefire agreement by attacking Indian posts in Jammu and Kashmir. Spokesperson of the Defence Ministry, Lieutenant Colonel Manish Mehta, said Indian troops gave a befitting reply to the unprovoked act. Since midnight, uh, Pakistan has uh, carried out unprovoked ceasefire violation in Poon sector, and uh, they have also used uh, mortars uh, to target Indian posts. Indian Army has responded appropriately and effectively. Uh, to the ceasefire violation Pakistan fired mortar shells on Indian positions along the line of control in Poonch district Badi wale ilake ko zyada wo nishana bana rahe hain to abhi tak nuksan ka to koi pata nahi chal raha hai lekin abhi tak bhi wo fire hai to log kafi dare hue hain gharon ke andar wo sem bilkul band hain bachche jo school nahi ja pa rahe hain No casualties or injuries have been reported so far local residents say the firing began from Pakistan side during the VRs and populated areas were targeted Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV Well Prime Minister Narendra Modi will arrive in Laos's capital Vientiane today to attend the 14th ASEAN India summit In a statement ahead of his visit Modi said partnership with ASEAN is important for safeguarding the security interests and countering traditional and non-traditional security challenges in the northeastern region On the sidelines of the summit Modi will interact with the leaders of participating countries to discuss bilateral issues of mutual concern Talks on issues such as maritime security terrorism economic and socio cultural cooperation will also be on the agenda of the prime minister Modi will also attend the 11th East Asia summit in Vientiane tomorrow India is uh, scaling up its cooperation with ASEAN in in the political security sphere primarily focused on traditional and non-traditional security challenges facing the region we look forward to working closely with asean on counter terrorism on anti piracy on cyber security and maritime issues Well, the 28th ASEAN summit began in Laos's capital Vientiane yesterday. On the first day, leaders signed a declaration on the collective disaster response. During the three-day summit, ASEAN leaders will meet various heads of state including India, China, Japan, Korea, Australia, and the United States. The 28th Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit began in Laos capital Vientiane on Tuesday. The 10 leaders of the regional bloc will kick off a one-day regional meeting before holding talks with other regional players, China, Japan, South Korea, Australia, India, Russia, New Zealand and the United States. The world leaders will review the progress of implementation of the ASEAN Community Blueprints 2025. One pe prayam vai va le sap son mi sing tha thai dan phuam man khong หลายอย่างเกิดขึ้นอยู่ภาคพื้นต่างๆของโลกเช่นการก่อการหาย U.S. President Barack Obama, who arrived for the summit on Tuesday, said his push to rebalance U.S. foreign policy to focus more on Asia was not a passing fad of his presidency. In a reference to China, he also said that bigger countries should not dictate smaller ones. I believe that the sovereignty and territorial integrity of every nation must be upheld. and we believe that every nation matters no matter their size we believe that bigger nations should not dictate to smaller nations and that all nations should play by the same rules america's treaty allies must know our commitment to your defense is a solemn obligation that will never waver however the asean opening ceremony was overshadowed by unusually open tensions between the united states and the philippines the philippines scrambled to defuse the row as president rodrigo duterte voiced regret for his controversial remarks on president barack obama that prompted washington to call off a bilateral meeting with inputs from akhilesh suman bureau report rajya sabha tv 
Well, it is day two of Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi's UP Kisan Mahayatra. He will be traveling a distance of 98 kilometers covering Gorakhpur, Sant Kabir Nagar and Basti districts. On the first day of the Yatra, Rahul met farmers promising them loan waivers and reduction in power tariff by 50% if voted to power in the state, which goes to polls in 2017. We have this we हिंदुस्तान की सरकार पर थोड़ा दबाव डालें किसान की जो समस्याएं हैं किसान के सामने जो दुख है किसान किसान के दिल में जो घबराहट है वो हम मोदी जी के कानों तक पहुंचाएं Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi sounding the poll bugle for the assembly elections in Uttar Pradesh on Tuesday Gandhi tried to woo farmers through his 2500 kilometer long Kisan Yatra which began from Deoria district सीधे सी बात है हिंदुस्तान का जो किसान है अगर आप उसकी इकोनॉमिक्स में जाएं अगर आप उससे पूछें कि भाई आप खेत में पैसा डालते कितने हो और निकलता कितना है तो आपको सीधा बता देगा कि जितना पैसा मैं डालता हूं उतना पैसा खेत से निकलता ही नहीं है the Congress leader began his yatra interacting with farmers with a door-to-door -door campaign. Later, at a cart sub leader came down heavily on the union government and Prime Minister Narendra Modi for neglecting the farming community. He talked a lot about the farmers. He said that we will do the farmers. The government of India will be the government of the farmers. मगर दुख की बात यह है कि जब से उनकी सरकार आई सिर्फ उत्तर प्रदेश में नहीं पूरे हिंदुस्तान में किसान को भूल गए हैं द यात्रा हैज कम इन फॉर अ लॉट ऑफ फ्लैग फ्रॉम द ऑपोजिशन दैट वेयर एवर इन द पास्ट मिस्टर राहुल गांधी हैड गॉन फॉर सच यात्राज दैट हैज प्रूव्ड एज द अंतिम यात्रा ऑफ द कांग्रेस पार्टी एंड द कांग्रेस हैड बीन नेल्ड देयर द सेम इज गोइंग टू हैपन इन उत्तर प्रदेश एज़ वेल Though this appears to be a safe Congress yatra, they are trying their best to save the dwindling uh, stakes of the Congress. चुनाव के मौके पर आके यात्राएं करते हैं। असल में बाकी समय ये मौन रहते हैं या कुछ और भी ऐसे कामों में व्यस्त रहते हैं जो जनता से जुड़े हुए काम नहीं हैं। खाट जानते नहीं ना कभी उस पर बैठे हैं, ना कभी किसी गरीब आदमी की चिंता की है, राजनीति However, at the end of the Khat Sabha, hundreds of courts brought in by the party for the event were taken away by onlookers, many of them arguing it was given to them by Rahul Gandhi. The Deoria to Dilli Yatra is part of the Congress campaign to end its 27-year exile from power in Uttar Pradesh. Rahul Gandhi will also hold road shows at various places during the Yatra. During the Mahayatra, he will cover as many as 233 assembly constituencies to reach out to the people. Vishal Dahiya's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, it's time for a short break now, but news and updates will continue on the other side. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. Well, defiant Arunachal Pradesh Governor Jyoti Prasad Rajkoa may be sacked after his refusal to heed to the center's advice to him to step down. 
Now, according to officials, the action may come after the special session of the Arunachal Pradesh Assembly, which is meeting for two days uh, from today to ratify the Goods and Services Tax Constitution Amendment Bill. Rajkua said that he had been asked to resign on health grounds weeks after the Supreme Court had restored the Congress government in Arunachal Pradesh and censured him. Earlier, Arunachal Pradesh governor has refused uh, to resign, saying that he wanted the president to dismiss him. Moving on now, Aps Punjab Women Wing Chief Baljinder Kaur today filed a complaint with the State Women's Commission against party's Delhi MLA Devinder Sharawat, alleging he was defaming the women in the state. This comes a day after Sharawat wrote a letter to AAP National Convener and Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal alleging that women were being exploited in return for tickets to fight Punjab Assembly polls due next year. Meanwhile, Anna Hazari on Tuesday said that he is very saddened to see that some of Kejriwal's colleagues have gone to jail while some others are indulging in fraud. He also said that uh, he had high expectations from Kejriwal with whom he has worked in the past. Stating that the concerns raised by social activist Anna Hazare were genuine, Delhi Deputy Chief Minister and AAP leader Manish Sisodia claimed that the party took quick and strong action against anything found wrong in the organization. Amidst all this, ex-Congress leader Jagmeet Brar said that he will extend unconditional support to Ahmadi Party in Punjab after forming an issue-based alliance with the party. Okay, Paksha or Party, Nikalta Nikalo. Lakin or Paksha or Party se koi alag udharan nirman hoga. Aise mujhe umid tha. Lakin durbhag ye hai ki chhe mantre mein teen mantre ghar jane ke naubad a gai. Mujhe bada dukh ho. Naji ne kisi bhi saman nagri karna. Naji to bhot pujjhe hai. Agar koi pratikri aisi di hai. तो वो संज्ञान में लेने लोग योग्य है और हर राजनीतिक दल को शुद्धिकरण करना आवश्यक है। आज जो हम देख रहे हैं, वो तो कथनी एक तरफ, करनी बिल्कुल दूसरी तरफ। आम आदमी पार्टी व्यवहार में दूसरों के स्तर पे है, लेकिन भाषा, उच्चारण, चोगा, पाखन, वो सब महात्मा वाला है। well, let's shift focus to some other news now. Misro is all set to launch the GSLV F05 carrying advanced weather satellite Insat 3DR from the spaceport of Sri Harikota on September 8th. The 29 hour countdown will begin at 11 10 a.m. today. GSLV F05 in its 10th flight would launch the 2,211 kilograms advanced weather satellite Insat 3DR into geostationary transfer orbit. The Mission Readiness Review Committee and Launch Authorization Board have cleared the countdown and the launch on September 8th. Insat 3DR will provide a variety of meteorological services to the country. GSLV F05 is the flight in which uh, the indigenously developed cryogenic upper stage will be carried on board for the fourth time during a GSLV flight. The previous launch by ISRO on a geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle was the launch of the GSLV D6 carrying the communication satellite GSAT-6 on August 27, 2015. Going on to some international news now, in Syria, government forces have been accused of using a helicopter to drop uh, two barrel bombs loaded with chlorine gas on residents in the eastern city of Aleppo. According uh, to the Syrian Civil Defense Group, a rescue workers uh, organization said that uh, 80 people had suffocated in the attack. However, no deaths were reported so far. The injured children were in hospital after the chlorine attack. Health workers were seen pouring water over them and providing oxygen masks to help them breathe. While the Syrian government has denied any involvement in using chemical weapons in the ongoing civil war, the Syrian army also could not be immediately reached for comment on the allegations. Earlier in August, a UN-led investigation found the government had used chlorine on at least two occasions. Here's a roundup of the other international news in World Wrap. 
The United Nations Security Council on Tuesday strongly condemned North Korea's ballistic missile launch. It also threatened of further significant measures if it refuses to stop its nuclear and missile tests. North Korea has repeatedly flouted Security Council resolutions demanding an end to its nuclear and ballistic missile activities and has continued to launch missiles mounting tensions on the Korean peninsula and in the region. Earlier on September 5th, North Korea fired three ballistic missiles into the sea off the east coast. A fire in Northern California has destroyed at least one home and burned around 600 acres of land. The Saddle Fire began last Monday as five smaller fires in the state's Butt County. The fire threatens 300 structures and has forced a mandatory evacuation of the surrounding area. Officials are still investigating the cause. At a campaign rally at uh, the University of South Florida, U.S. Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton criticized Trump's recent trip to Mexico and termed him as uh, temperamentally unfit and totally unqualified to be president of the United States. The U.S. presidential campaign's focus shifted to national security on Tuesday. She warned that uh, in terms of fighting terrorism, Trump is placing the United States in even greater danger than it already is in with a secret plan to destroy the Islamic State, saying that the secret is that he doesn't actually have a plan. In Los Angeles, nearly two dozen people were injured when a Metrolink commuter train carrying nearly 200 passengers crashed into a semi-truck. 21 people were taken to uh, the area hospitals with minor injuries. Dozens of firefighters and medical personnel rescued the 187 passengers on board the train. The crash occurred at an intersection and a crossing guard arm appeared to have been snapped. And finally, of course, uh, let's get you some sports news and news from the U.S. Open. India's campaign ended today after seventh seed Sanya Mirza and Barbara Strykova crashed out of the quarterfinal. The duo lost to women's double top seeds Caroline Garcia and Kristina Mladenovic 6-7-1-6. Sanya Mirza was India's last representative at the U.S. Open after Rohan Bopanna and his Canadian partner Gabriela Dabrowski lost in the mixed doubles quarters on Monday. Meanwhile, in the women's singles, uh, Caroline Wozniacki made it through to a fifth U.S. Open semi-final after Latvia's Anastasia uh, Sevastova was defeated due to an ankle injury in their quarterfinal clash. Wozniacki will play German second seed Angelique Kerber in the semi-final, who defeated 2015 finalist Italy's Roberta Vinci 7-5, 6-0. And the men's singles top seed and defending U.S. Open champion Novak Djokovic advanced through to the semi-final after Frenchman Joel Fritzonga retired from the match following a knee injury. This has been Djokovic's third win by default in five matches so far at the championship. Lucas Pauli, who beat Rafael Nadal uh, at the U.S. Open, also ended after he lost to fellow Frenchman Gael Monfils in straight sets in the quarterfinal. Well, that's it on this edition of The Breakfast News. Have a good day.